I don't care how old you are, you're always someone's child. I work with kids all day, I see that love. I have to give news to parents every day. Leukemia, cancer. Give leukemia me my diseases. drugs. Give me my drugs. I want my drugs. Give me my drugs. I want my drugs. Give me my drugs. Kids what do we want? There's drugs. no worse news. When do we want them? Now. What do we want? Me to drugs. See what this disease when do we is want them? Now. What do we want? Drugs. When do we want them? Now. What do we want? Drugs. When do we want them? Now. What do we want? Drugs. When do we want them? Now. What do we want? Drugs. When do we want them? Now. What do we want? Drugs. When do we want them? Now. What do we want? Drugs. When do we want them? Now. What do we want? Drugs. When do we want them? Now. Thank you. I started acting as a kid. And um, I was doing it pretty steadily through uh, middle school and high school. Uh, and then when I was about college age, um, I was kind of, I didn't know if I wanted to go to college or if I wanted to continue acting. And I decided that I was gonna go and do my bachelor's degree. And at the end of, of, of my BA, I was kind of in finals and I was studying for finals and it was really stressful and the way I would, kind of unwind and shake it off uh, was I would binge watch the first season of this brand new show, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I'm checking in. I, I, I get to check in. That's the kind of friends we are. I do not have time for coffee. I do not have time for meetings. I, my job is not to make you feel better about me. My job is to make my patients get better. Do you know what can happen in the hour or two I would be wasting with you? An hour or two matters. They matter to me. They should matter to you. They matter to my patients. If I leave, and my patient dies, it's not me who will suffer. It is his mother, his sisters, his friends, his wife, and they will hate me. With everything inside them, they will hate me. And you, and everyone here, because they won't understand why he is gone, why people always leave, why everyone you give a crap about walks away or is ripped from your world without warning, without reason, in convenience stores and plane crashes and podunk hospitals with podunk doctors who don't do what they are supposed to do, which is save people. And then when I was done with the bachelors, I was like, I, may, I think I might want to go to med school. And so I signed up for this pre-med lecture series at the medical faculty. And um, it was like a six week course where surgeons would come in and talk to you about what they really do and what studying medicine is really like. And I kind of got to the end of this six week uh, course of study and had this like watershed moment where I was like, I don't think I want to be a doctor. I, I think I just want to be on Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> what I am doing next with Herman is much much harder than this. I only need to be better, and I am going to get there any way I can. If you are not willing to do that, then you shouldn't be working with me, and you probably shouldn't be a surgeon. Understand? There's a thing we say when someone dies. We say it to the patient's family. There are on-call rooms for that. One of many things that impresses me about Katerina is how much she really, really cares. I mean, she's been playing Amelia Shepard for years at this point. Nobody knows that character better than she does. And each time she gets a script, she's really, it's really, really important to her to, um, make sure that everything is in line with what she already understands about this character. There are so many factors in her, um, in her growth this year. I think the surgery, uh, the Herman surgery, was huge for her. That's my tumor. That's my tumor. Where did you get it, and why do you have it? Wow. OK. Hi. Children. We just shot this huge intervention episode where awful things are happening and Amelia's saying awful things and... Whoa! What the hell was that? They called the police. And every hospital in LA. And more. So Amelia is just a holy terror to everyone. I'm just a couple of days of work and suddenly I'm... Twelve. What? 
You missed 12 days of work. No one has seen you in 12 days. When Amelia was introduced to the show, the backstory was that when she was a teenager, she had struggled with drug addiction. An intervention? That was what caused the estrangement with Derek. But she had gotten sober and gone to med school and residency and become a neurosurgeon, and so she'd been sober for, for 10 years. There are no patients coming today. Today is about you. Are you freaking kidding me? Amelia? She's kind of struggling with alcohol, but hasn't been dabbling in drugs, and then she has a friend who has Huntington's disease, who wants her to assist her suicide. Amelia is having a very hard time with this decision and is kind of torn up about it, attempts it, it doesn't go well. She and her friend decide that they're going to try and help each other in life and she's going to live, and then her friend does commit suicide and Amelia finds her. And so that kind of precipitates the, the, the fall off the wagon the second time. I'm not letting you leave. I was, she's upset. She's a right to be upset. And so she starts drinking and she starts doing hard drugs again. And that's where we're at now. She's kind of burned everything to the ground in her life, her friendships and her jobs. Your big interventions screwed up people telling me how screwed up I am because last I checked, I'm a world-class neurosurgeon with a near-perfect surgical record. I get to put a very human face on addiction. I get to show Amelia as this beautiful, generous, vulnerable, character who's also suffering from this terrible disease and and that it has an impact on both her and the whole community around her and that we have to take addiction very seriously and treat it as the terrible disease that it is i am loving you you are winning better than charlie sheen as long as i overlook the fact that you're a giant oxy addict who's killing herself everyone here is in agreement you will no longer be enabled enabled so many your special SAT words. Something good. Some little piece of beauty in the midst of some place dark. scene especially where she confronts Meredith in a supply closet near the end of the episode where all of her grief and her issues with Meredith connected to the death of Derek uh, come out and it's a very long speech and a very hard emotional place to get to. How many hours later was it before I was even informed? How many chances did you have when you could have called me? Why didn't you call me? She nailed it just in two takes, you know, just nailed it. And then she, being a perfectionist, going, no, no, we can, I can do it better, I can do it better. And eventually I had to say to her, look, you did it. You know, we, we got to the top of the mountain, Katarina. There's no more mountain to climb. I didn't get to tell him goodbye because of you. You gave him your father's watch? Amelia. Amelia, look at me. It's his engagement present. It's your father's watch. Leave me alone. Maybe just give her a little bit of... This is none of your business. I'm speaking to my sister. Look, I'm not your sister. You took this from your mother. Do you know how that's going to make her feel? Okay, let's everyone calm down. What is the significance of the watch? Nothing, it's a watch. Amelia, my mom gave it to my dad for their anniversary one year. That is not the significance. Yeah. It's not, and you know it's not, Sam. Amelia. Two guys came into her father's store when she was five. Shut up! You do not tell that to Dorian. That is not your story. It was not your dad. It was my dad. You shut your mouth. Shut up! You stupid, ignorant, monster bitch! You do not tell that story. You do not ever tell that story. You ever tell that story to anyone, and I will kill you with my bare hands. Let's go. I want to go. 
Screw it. Cry, Amelia. No. I'm not letting go. I've got you. <laughs> I've got you. <laughs> okay. This is a unicorn baby. I shouldn't have to do this with a unicorn baby. I want this to be over. Ryan should be here. I want Ryan. Amelia, you're almost there. No. No, this is too hard. I have to push. No, no, no. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, God. It hurts. I want some drugs. Hang in there. I can't. I can't do this. Yes, you can, uh, Addison. I don't want her here. Yes, you do. I don't. I don't. I don't want you here. Yes, you do, Amelia. Addie. Addie. My baby's gonna die. I know. I'm so, so sorry. To them emotionally, but also just in terms of the words and and what we were tackling there. That we wanted to have everything kind of laid in before we showed up on the day and became available to you know, spontaneous flow. We're supposed to feel, we're supposed to love and hate and hurt and grieve and break and be destroyed and rebuild ourselves to be destroyed again. That is human, that is humanity. That's, that's, that's being alive. I find that really admirable that she had the desire to do that and we did that and I think it really made the scene better. Derek died. He died. I don't want to feel it. I, just, I don't think I can. I don't think I even want to. I can't. I can't. I can't do this. I can't. If you don't. No, I can't. You I can't do this. You have to. If you don't, that bag of oxy is not going to be your last. One of the things that was nice about the fact that I was crossing over uh, while I was on private practice was that I got to kind of come over and see the cousins. <laughs> you know what I mean? It kind of felt like the other side of the family. And uh, so I already had a lot of friends over here. We've got all these incredible humans here uh, doing this incredibly vulnerable, scary, brave thing. And they all have stories. And I think um, I like to create um, I like to I like to build family on set, and I think that we have an incredible one here. Such great people, such talented people, um, and they've had such colorful lives, both professionally and personally. And there's just so much to learn from each other.